Hello everyone, this is Dr. Praveen Tripathi and with me is Dr. Akshat Kaushik who got rank 8 in INICT. Akshat, many many congratulations. Thank you so much sir. So Akshat, uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, which attempt was this for you and uh, which college uh, did you uh, uh, do your MBBS from? I have done my MBBS from Ames Delhi and this was my uh, technical second attempt uh, because along with our internship we are allowed one attempt in November. Uh -huh. so, after that, I gave this as my first attempt because I prepared for the first time. All right. So, Akshat, you are telling me that uh, this is the first proper attempt for you. Yep. So, in that case, you did not uh, you know, study so well during your internship. Yes. Was, was there a strategy behind it? Because what we see is that you know, students from bigger colleges like Ames or maybe big Delhi colleges, they try to you know go the, do the, their best in the internship itself. So, what was your thinking behind this? So, sir, around the time of my final professionals, uh -huh. I had a very stressful time for me. And uh -huh. I had to go through a very deep uh, phase where I had to think about what I want from life and how things are going to be. So, uh -huh. I made a decision that in internship, I cannot double down on myself. I cannot uh, really handle that much stress as well. Mm -hmm. So, I gave my time to decompress a bit, mm -hmm. especially during my internship. But okay. I also realized ki that meant ki once my November attempt of INI is done, that means I have to totally and totally double down and stick with that. So I made a deal with myself, you can say, and I knew that it would uh, bring on a lot of challenges, which basically means ki when I gave my November attempt, so there was a lot of social impact to it. Mm. Like people used to think, ki, okay, iski, uh, UGK time rank, gayi, what's going to happen now and everything and that. So I feel everybody, if they're honest with themselves, if they're true to themselves, and they give them a chance to, uh, they give themselves a chance to live as well as to perform. So, and if they do it according to their own, let's say subconscious mind, but uh, then things somehow work out and you have to have a plan. So I did not really study throughout my internship, but I did give uh, one or two GTs throughout the year, mm. just so I knew where I stand, where I stood. Because uh, if I was getting less than 100 corrects without even uh, you know, knowing anything, then I would be a bit hazy. Ki, am I even going to be able to do this in four months, five months? But mm. then I still was able to score above 120, correct? Without even reading or touching up on any subject for like one year, two years. Mm. Two years. So I was like, ki, okay, I knew where I stood. I kept a touch with where I stand in my preparation. And so that I knew ki for my five months is going to be a good enough time. If anywhere along that course, I would have felt ki nahi, I'm forgetting everything. So I would have started early. So okay. my message is that you should know where you are and be true to yourself. So basically what you're saying is that uh, we can have the best of both the worlds. We can also chill and relax and enjoy our internship. And then next four or five months, we can go full throttle as you are, to just borrow your words, double down on the preparation and still come up with such a great rank. But Akshat, may I have a question. I mean... This strategy might work for people who have got a strong foundation. Okay. Right. See, I'm presuming you are from Ames Delhi, of course, the most premier institutions, and there's a selection bias. I mean, somebody who's really good could enter Ames Delhi. Of course. Of course. Uh, do you think that the same strategy can work for somebody, for an average medical student who may or may not have that stronger foundation? Sir, I uh, I feel that whenever I have been asked this question, ki tum kitne ghande padte ho ya ye wo? So my answer to that has always been a bit uh, confounding for the profounding whatever for the other person but what is really important to me is that I don't flaunt that I can study in less time. It's more what's more important is that I look at my results and if I'm happy with them, I continue what I'm doing. And if I'm not happy with that, I increase whatever time I have to put in, whatever work I have to put in. And this strategy, I don't feel it's just for exams. Even mm -hmm. let's say I am, people might say, okay, I'm a bit smart IQ wise, mm -hmm. but when it comes to other things, let's say fitness. So I'm not a genetically blessed person there. Mm -hmm. So when I know I have a particular fitness goal and I'm not reaching there or I'm not on the right path, I'm going to double down on it. I'm going to spend more time in the gym. I'm going to spend more mm -hmm. willpower on my diet or whatever planning I need to do. Similarly, I feel ki it's pretty much an excuse. If I can say I have five, six hours to study, if I was not able to get the GT marks in those six hours, I would definitely study for it. And what really matters is, are you progressing according to your own results or not? You made a good point there, especially with the analogy with uh, analogy yeah. of going to gym. 
that uh, a part of it is of course genetics and yeah. then the second part is the hard work and uh, different people are blessed differently in different aspects so you can always increase the effort and reach till there all right uh, uh during mbbs days i just want to go back to your mbbs days uh would you say that uh, you were focused on building good concepts and you were always very focused about the pg entrance examination that i should have a good foundation on which i can build upon and then finally get a good result or like a lot of students you know theek hai nikal jaye mbbs pass ho jaye theek thak chala jaye what was your approach during so mbbs my approach was pretty much that i i was not ex- Extra serious about something, let's say professional exams or clinical posting. Not like uh, very disciplined every day. I would go to the uh, mm. postings. Not really. Mm. But I did make sure that if I am going, then it's not just to show up to show my face. If I am mm. going there, teaching me something. If I am watching a case, even if there's one single word that I don't know, I I'll, I'll Google it. I'm a very inquisitive person within myself as well. Mm. But then it's about the time. So when people, you know, when people like it, थोड़ा chill करना है, party करना है. So I'm like, okay, do that completely, but that should not mean कि जब तुम पढ़ाई करने जा रहे हो या जब तुम postings जा रहे हो, uh, get lazy there. So I feel whatever you're doing, you should do it completely while enjoying it. If not, well said, well said. जो भी करो तो तमीज से करो, चाहे enjoy करो चाहे पढ़ाई कर रहे हो. अब अक्षत यू भाई भी enjoy कर सकते हो मतलब भाई भी enjoy कर सकते हो बिल्कुल. अक्षत यू seem to be a big fan of GTs. You took a lot of GTs, right? Uh, so uh, what is the thinking behind this? GT prem, extra GT prem ki padhai karo na karo GT ke dete raho. I'm, I'm sure there must be something in your mind. Sir, basically uh, we are finally preparing for a test. So as far as PG is concerned, it's ultimately a three-hour test, mm. and it's gonna be randomized. It's gonna have a component of PYQs, mm. and it's gonna uh, come down to how much uh, time you can uh, compartmentalize, how much of energy you can acutely spend in those three hours. So ultimately, it's the final. It's like a a a batsman को batting ही सीखना है. तो उसके लिए best test भी एक over खेलना ही है. So as long as I'm in touch with the GT, I know कि where am I lagging? Where there were times where I could not even focus for the three full hours. Mm. So that mm. meant I don't really need to up my knowledge. Mm. I rest more if that mm. makes sense. Or I need to sleep more. Or I need to make sure कि what physiological variables have i gotten wrong right before the exam have i eaten too much too less is there caffeine is there no caffeine hydration whatever it is mm. as long as i am in touch with that aspect through gts i could really analyze where i stand mm. and uh, as far as the academic component goes the whole 200 topics if i am giving let's say uh, by the end by the last two three months i was giving at least two gts every week mm. so two gts every week okay mm. yeah, very i Uh, I am an avid GT taker. I don't like to study all that much. So, yeah, I remember. I remember messaging you after the Cerebellum's uh, INICT Mock One. Uh, what was your rank in that Mock One? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. No, so, so that is an interesting thing. I was just discussing this with you that you got rank twenty-eight uh, amongst the five thousand odd students who took it, and then when the one lakh student took it, you you went to rank eight. So I you know, genuinely feel that this exam particularly selected for people who. Are not like muggers, but they yeah. are actually people who apply brain right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there were many questions that you can even frame as factual questions, but you can very easily with common sense, with a bit of clinical acumen, rule out the options. Right. And reach to the right answer, even though it was a pretty tough question. Uh, you also appeared for multiple ENDs. So uh, this END thing, you know, the whole approach of you know how to solve a particular MCQ. How to eliminate the options? So, what what do you have to say about it? How how do these ENDs help? Sir, I feel it all boils down to synaptic plasticity. In the end, you have to just uh, learn, and not just the one two years of MBBS or PG prep, but through all the twenty twenty five years of your life, mm. it's all about building those neuronal connections. Ki yahan se nahi to yahan se answer pe you have to reach. Mm. and uh, especially when we talk about things like tnds ends mm. uh, it's a very passive form of learning which mm. i love because i am i don't like reading books per se i can mm. uh, do it every now and then but it takes too much effort from me mm. so mm. these videos the test and discussions are something i can just play while i eat or just lie down mm. just chill whatever but mm. uh, then i can uh, utilize all the low energy time i would otherwise have in my day like most right. people a study when they have all the energy and then they just scroll or do whatever they want for mm. the low energy time but that's where i was able to optimize both my high energy time and low energy time mm. 
you also used a bit of btr btr was you know the concise uh, portion and and not only concise building upon everything that you know and bringing everything together so yes, so how so, was that experience like so i purchased btr only 2 months before i and i like 2 months before okay. now okay and i had what were you doing before that i was doing sir uh, revision notes from okay the, notes and all yeah. btr was just a place to concise everything right and that's right. what my friends had told me as well yeah yeah so and knowing uh, zainab ma'am or i can i think i can call her zainab as well because she is also my senior from aims okay aims has this culture where but i'll call her zainab ma'am so <laughs> uh, i uh, in the way she taught i realized that everything that she says whether it's about the cross mnemonics or something else it's very similar to how i used to study back in 11 12th as well and mm. even now mm. it's about how i memorize how i form those links mm. so i just felt like ki a lot of my work has been done for me mm. <laughs> and it's like i just wo links mai bhi banata baith ke but wo apne aap i am seeing that and i can very easily remember those things and more Wonderful. importantly it helped me uh, give it gave some new material to me to watch because i was very bored with whatever i had summarized mm. before mm. that Mm, so mm. along with btr and just the confidence of knowing ki majority mm. cheez to yahi do books se aa jayengi was mm. a lot mm. and anything above that is just my clinical acumen and uh, mm. Mm. right those three hours wonderful and uh, so uh, if we talk about how to handle oneself in the one week before the exam and also during the exam so did you have any advices for a juniors who would be preparing for this exam uh, So I feel that uh, I planned my prep in these three, four phases only, mm-hmm. uh, which was let's say if we are talking about five months. So it was what I'm going to do from day one to mm-hmm. let's say forty-five days before the exam. Mm-hmm. Then the next thirty uh, days, and then the next fifteen days. Okay. And more than more importantly, uh, more important than what I'm going to study in those time, it was what mindset I'm going am I going to have For, right. uh, in the first four and a half, three and a half months. there were no excuses unless i'm sick extremely tired something very important i just have to study i have to do whatever i want i used mm. to uh, write my to do list for the next day before i went to sleep mm. Mm. and i did it there are no excuses over there mm. then in the next one month i would focus more on uh, solving questions and uh, watching tnds or whatever all about those neuronal connections 19 subjects integration but then in the last 15 days especially in the last week i feel it is the time to really give yourself some time to relax mm. because in the end your brain can consume as much as 30 40% of your total calorie consumption and mm. you have to treat it like a muscle so you have trained it so hard for four four months five months in the last week you have to take it a bit slow you have to load it with carbs or whatever like or like a muscle and then just one day before exam you have to give it complete complete rest and that's what i did mm. i watched a couple movies and talked to my friends just one day before the exam Wonderful. that's what i feel i have heard different things online most people say ki puri ek syllabus teen din mein pad jao but and that, i mean different things work for different people there is yeah. no single i think that's the most important thing that you should know what works for you exactly and believe in it yeah, but but you are a very sorted out person for a young age like maybe you are 25 or what 24 25 23 yeah? sir 23 ha huh? so you are just 23 pretty sorted out it's, it's nice to see wonderful akshat so uh, what next what are you planning to take so uh, i i have always wanted a surgical branch mm. uh, but uh, i have to talk to a lot of people that's what everybody is advising me as well my parents and everyone will make a decision wonderful you you come from a family of doctors right yes sir and okay. sir in interventional radiology also you have some surgical components so so akshat thank you thanks a lot it was really nice talking to you and i'm sure everybody who is watching this video or who would watch this video would you know get a lot of material to pick from and then i really like your mindset of you know whatever you are doing do it 100% and the, the different things can be balanced together but i think the idea is if you go 100% then you uh, end up having a lot of time to do multiple things many congratulations akshat once again and and i'm sure and i can, I can foresee that you will be very successful in your professional career as well uh, thank, you. thank you thank you for talking to us and may god bless you thank you